Hello, and welcome to Conversations with Women of Spirit, Transforming Lives. For the past several months, I've had the wonderful opportunity to interview authors in this anthology called uh, Women of Spirit, Transforming Lives. And today I have a lovely young woman with me who is such, sh sh such an example, the epitome really, of uh, a conscious person in today's world. Her name is Mika Leon Pettit. And uh, she's a pretty amazing gal. I'm gonna share a little bit. You don't mind here if I, if I read her bio, but she has a very impressive bio and a very impressive background for such a young person. She's a health practitioner and an energetic alignment counselor. She's an author and teacher with a bachelor's in natural health studies and a master's in metaphysical science. I love to see that. When I was growing up, there was no such thing as a master's in metaphysical science, <laughs> unless you were in the convent or a monastery somewhere. She is currently in the doctoral program at the University of Sedona in transpersonal counseling. She has a podcast, How to Heal, and she helps her followers uh, heal on all levels in life with suggestions from her practice, along with groundbreaking information from her guest speakers. Mika has is published in Women of Spirit, which I just mentioned, volume two, and she has a book coming out, Quieting the Mind in a Chaotic World, and this will be released in 2023. She writes articles for Herbaria newsletter and Plant Healers magazines. So I that was one thing that I didn't I wasn't aware of that you were involved in plant healing. No, I mean, that's 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 quite an interesting addition to the work that you're already doing. So anyway, welcome, darling. It's so wonderful to have you here today. It was a, Thank you, Patricia. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Yeah, you're so well. You're so welcome. So I'm always interested uh, to ask to know how one wakes up spiritually. Now, what was your inspiration for waking up spiritually such that you would choose an educational path and a career devoted to spirituality and healing? I just love that. What was your childhood growing up? And tell me how you, you came to be awakened at such a young age. Uh, actually, Patricia, that's a good question. Um, I have a very uh, eclectic background. And as a child, I went through a lot of different things in my life, um, a lot of trauma, uh, abuse, and um, I couldn't wait to get away from um, where I lived, which was I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. And so right out of high school, I went and straight into the military, got, I was totally doing something totally different, did everything from uh, office administration to sales, so you name it, I have a lot of different things in my background besides the health and wellness. So I came back around to it in the late, I would say mid, mid 90s or so, but I've always been one of those kids that always felt like I was in tune. I always felt, and I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize right now for the background. You're probably hearing a truck coming up the hill. So we're I live currently, there's constant sounds in the background. So I apologize right now. I don't hear a thing. I don't oh, hear Oh, good, good. That's good to hear. But yeah, I was always one of those kids that um, was a little more stranger than, than the others. So I'd ask really strange questions about death. And I thought I was going to be one of those kids that died at 33 when I, yeah, it was just, um, so I always had these little visions. I always felt like I was always going to be okay. No matter what I did, I had these guardian guys just kind of watching over me. And I also used to get premonitions when I was younger, where I would say, okay, I think this, this is one of those trains where something's going to happen. And that's what I used to get when I was a kid. So I felt like I was always somehow spiritually connected, no matter what I did um, as I went along my path. But when I really got more into it as being a career was in the late to mid nineties. Uh, my daughter was still pretty young. And um, I started with aromatherapy as a form of healing my own eczema. Uh, yeah, and also too, I wound up working in a health food store up in Washington state. And then I wound up uh, at the same time while I was at the health food store and taking the certification in aromatherapy, then I decided that I wanted to go for aesthetics as well. So, you know, a lot of times as healers, as you know, when you go into healing as a career, a lot of times it was you're trying to heal yourself first. 
And then it happens to be one of those things you realize like, wow, this, you know, this actually benefits me. So it's going to benefit a lot of other people as well. So that's how I really got into the more um, alternative health. But the spirituality stuff was pretty much back there. I think the whole time it's just that I wasn't focused focus on it in that way. But I mean, even I even thought even as young as a teenager, I thought I may wind up being in a, a nun or something where it was going to be. Yeah. So, so it was one of those, one of those big swings. Okay. Either you're, you're going to be military or, <laughs> or you're going to be, you're going to be in a, a convent or working with the nuns or something. So I even was there kind of in between in my twenties and stuff. And I think that was just me trying to find a way to balance my, my spiritual side of myself. Hmm. What were you raised in a religion? Let's put it like this. <laughs> yes, but no, because my mom really wasn't that religious, but she wanted, she expected the kids to go to church. And I remember, I remember even having this conversation with my mom, like, well, you're not going, but you're making us go. So I wanted to know what was going on with that. My mom really didn't get religious and started daily, you know, doing weekly church or even regularly until I was long gone. We were, me and my brother, and my sister were adults and just off and, and somewhere. So I wouldn't say necessarily that, yeah, it was a religious family, but my mom expected us to be involved in the church somehow. So I did it through the choir. You did it? Yeah, did you- I would go to the, and sing, yeah. And sing. Oh, that's mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that's a wonderful way to tune into our spirituality. Yeah, I, I think that structured religion can uh, start us on our path. Uh, and it can start us on our path and stop us in the middle of it. <laughs> but, exactly. Yeah, and what yeah. we discover. So I think it, it has its place. But uh, when we look at what's going on today, when we look at spirituality, which I think is totally separate from religion. I always make it very clear when I work with people that, you know, my, my work is not about religion. It's about spirituality, which is really pretty much grounded in science. Mm -hmm. So you started out in aromatherapy. So you actually started out with the whole, this, this whole idea of herbs and, and, and healing the body with natural you know, exactly, because yeah. I never was a kid that wanted to take any medications, pharmaceutical drugs, over-the-counter drugs. I was never, I just was never attached to it or wanted to do it. So um, it was easy. It was an easy transition or an easy um, intro for me, because that's where I naturally would want to go anyway. Yeah. So you're 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 really in the thick of your educational program right now. You know, for some reason, even with all our conversations prior to this, I didn't know you were you were doing University of Sedona. I just got back from Sedona. We talked. I know. I love Sedona. So, I mean, obviously, they're not. You're not there, obviously, physically, but you're just doing it totally virtually. Yeah. Yes, I'm doing it totally virtually, and and they do have their. Um, graduation classes, and they do have convention um, also too, so everybody can meet up as well. So yes, right now I am currently in Lake Chapala, Mexico, and finishing up my dissertation and my uh, research here. And what is your research on? It's going to be on sound and psychology. Um, It's basically a Transforming the mind through sound and psychology for your highest potential is the title of my dissertation. Soma psychology. Is that what you said? Sound. Sound. Oh, sound, and, mm-hmm. sound yeah, because, and the reason why I, I chose that, my, my, um, my thesis was in energetic healing and energetic medicine. And I, I definitely believe from just over the years of working physically on people and energetically, and even now with the clinic, um, a lot of things are energetic, as you know, they're, they're the foundation of your physical states are really energetic things that have, you can't see them begin and you can't just like our childhood, as you know, you know, all those things that build up from your childhood that's still in your aura if you haven't cleansed that stuff or healed it. So my, my thought process after the, um, adding the energetic principles for my thesis was now what is the thing that can balance you back Um, energetically to your natural blueprint so you can reach your highest potential and does it without any kind of interference sound that's wonderful well you know I I I, 
six, gosh, it was where four years ago, I wrote a speech called The Science Behind Success Frequency. And I didn't get a lot of support for it from my colleagues because they said, well, what are you talking about frequency? <laughs> I said, no, but everything is energy. Everything, if let's go back to Einstein and quantum physics, everything's energy, everything's frequency. And um, I'll never forget someone sent me um, um, something on Facebook that said, that showed this very mystical woman sitting in Lotus with the cosmos behind her. And it said, the language of the universe is not English it's frequency. And I went, mm -hmm. yeah, I know it is. And so I'm so glad that I hung in there with it because now frequency is a conversation. Exactly, Patricia. And you go way before your time, just like one of my mentors, uh, Stephen Halpern, who started, he's like the father, one of the yeah founding fathers of sound him. healing. And him. exactly. Now he was way before his time. And now all the stuff that he was trying to teach since the 60s up with his music is just starting to really come into to the mainstream um, yeah, voice or you can actually hear some of this stuff and they've actually researched and proved a lot of what they were already saying, just like how you were saying years ago. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's been around a long time. What mm -hmm. about um, working with crystal bowls and uh, bells and all the wonderful different sound tools that are out there now? I've got friends that are into sound healing. In fact, I'm going to connect you with this gal up in Canada because she's an amazing sound healer. Oh, and cool. uh, I think it would be good for, for you to make that connection. So do you work with the bells and the bowls and all of that? Um, mostly not with bowls. I will, you know, I personally started with um, forks, tuning forks years ago. Oh. And I love them because they're easy to take with you. Uh, while you're traveling, you're light, you can just wrap them up in a bag and you're ready to go. With the bowls, I found when I got the bowls, I'm, I'm too, uh, I'm not fragile, I'm not like delicate with them. So I would break, I'd crack my crystal bowls. And so, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if it's an Aquarian trade. I hope not. <laughs> Yeah, so so that's why I stick with. I love the forks. I work in the energetic field with the forks, and I also use the music too. And I might actually, I'm um, looking into studying with Sherry Edwards, who does sound health, and hers is a little more specific um, with the voice print. So that may be something else that um, I may be adding as well, because as we know, it, like they're saying, you know, you've got this vibration and this frequency that you're carrying in your voice, and it tells you what you're missing, it tells you where you're at at that time, and that's a really good um, diagnostic tool for a lot of people when they come in, because that, like I was saying before, that's how you want to work with them kind of first energetically, because they can tell you things about their life. But a lot of times that's coming from first, second, and third chakra, where it's like um, ego-based. It's, it's not necessarily the actual, you want to get down to the actual print of what's really going on with them, not just what they tell you. And these types of tools kind of cut through, like we were saying with the sound, the voice profiling, things like that, will really get you deeper into where that person should really begin with their healing. You know, for several years in my own healing process from the trauma from my childhood, and you know what? We're having a human experience. Everyone has trauma. Right. You know, I don't care how, uh, you know, simple or innocuous their childhood was. I don't think anyone has a simple childhood. <laughs> no matter how we're raised, where we're raised, by whom we're raised, we're going to deal with belief systems, imprints, and programs in our subconscious that mess us up. And if we've had trauma in our childhood, and I think that um, you and I had this conversation about being molested as children, you know, that really hangs out in the body it's there and it's deep and it's in the subconscious and I did some of the most amazing work someone else I perhaps would like to connect you with his name is Deepak Chari and he's in um, he's in San Diego and he does a program that he developed on the shoulders of these German fellows who had something called Vox V-O-X I don't know if you've heard of Vox no. there and that was based on the premise that in our voice is our history. Mm, yes. And when we are talking about something, you no. Know, anyway, I worked for a couple of years with him, seeing him like every other week. And he had me on headphones and he was behind there with his computer program. He had a computer program that he had developed on the shoulders of these guys in Germany. And uh, he would have you start talking about 
your childhood and about these traumas. And he was able to nail exactly where that vibrational frequency was in your emotional body that was blocked from the situation. Amazing. Yes. And he would be a really good person for you to connect with from the standpoint of your research. I would love it. Yes. His Thank name you. is Mark Charby, and I will definitely connect you with him. Anyway, it helped me tremendously because I went right back into Catholicism and how I was raised and what I was taught and the belief systems and the event that happened in my life. And I think that through working with him, I was able to clear a lot of that. Yeah. Yes. So that's an amazing, that's an amazing um, focus for you, sound. It's wonderful. Yeah. And I got really good teachers. Uh, Stephen's been really helpful sending me information and just kind of connecting me um, and with his books, his books are in my dissertation too, because um, really great information that's just coming to light, and and I want to help him get back out there as much as possible now too. Now that everybody's like, oh, okay, so I get, I get it now. I can understand what you're, yeah, talking about. I listen, here. I listen to his music almost all the time. You know, I haven't listened to it lately though. I haven't really. Has he done anything lately? He revised a couple of things that what was before their time. And then he had he had to revise and change the names and everything of them recently. But yeah, you should definitely check out his site again um, and go on there and, and see what he's got new to offer. Yeah, I really would like to do that. And, and I could probably download it on Audible. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that's great. Well, good. Stephen Halpern, a voice out of my past. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be up there. He's got to be yes. 70s now at least yes i think mid 70s i think he's 74 maybe going on 75 yeah he's my contemporary <laughs> <laughs> Very sweet guy. you're you're in the midst of completing your dissertation you'll have your doctorate congratulations i mean just the fact that you've gone so far and you've you know you've really been i think you're a reflection of uh the classic outrageous aquarius no, I mean, <laughs> being able, being able to move past the blocks, you know, perhaps in your childhood uh, that uh, could have stopped you from moving forward, but you were able to really surpass them. You no, know? and you are a true Aquarian. You're a visionary. I mean, you, you, you've been doing this work for for a long time, even before you went into it academically. Right. I guess I'm surprised. I do remember now when we chatted that you talked about the military. I, I'm always stunned when I when I hear about women that go into the military. What you know, what was your, your motivation was to get out of the house? Definitely. <laughs> my motivation was, well, my, my mom at the time was putting my sister through college and I'm like, oh, well, there's no way I'm going to try to make my mom put both of us through school as a single mom. So I'll just go to the military. So that was my answer. Yeah. And what branch did you go in the army? Navy, Navy. You went into the Navy and how long were you there? Almost three years. I had my daughter, my husband at the time was still in. He got, he stayed in and then I got out. And oh, he was daughter. in the, he was in the military. That's where you met him? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So how do you think the military contributed to your spiritual life? There's a question for you. Oh, that is a good question. Well, I could tell you what, I thought at first I was going to be a lifer. I, I just was like, I was literally calling my mom from boot camp saying, I'm going to do 20 you know, she thinks she was, I was going to be crying, calling home crying, saying I want to come back home. And I'm in boot camp saying, yeah, I think I'm going to do 20. I think as far as my spirit, I think with my spiritual growth, I got to, I got to experience things that I think, and people too, like you get people just like me from all these little small towns and all over the place that you may never get to experience and you get to grow up a lot faster too um when you're you know you're 18 and then all of a sudden you're out on your own with the bunch of other 18 year olds and 19 year olds um so i think it it kind of um gave me that perspective that there's so many different people from different places and that kind of put me on a path of, and, I've, and I, just like you, I'm sure like you're Aquarian as well. You probably have met so many different types of people in your life or been around or experienced or had all these different experiences. I think we just draw them in. And I said, if nothing else, yeah, I think if nothing else it is spiritually, it just opens me up to other people's uh, 
thoughts, perceptions, and, and how they live. Yeah. So it broadens your perspective on life and on mm -hmm. people and all of that. Yeah. yeah it's uh, when we have a spiritual perspective, we can look at humanity, first of all, with great compassion, because most people are asleep to this conversation that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And I didn't mention that yet, but I know you and I are in alignment with that. Right. That's a very powerful position for us to be in because we can have great compassion for the world and for people as they go through their own struggles to wake up and to, and, and to find out who they are and what this life is about. Uh, you know, I think that once we understand the rules, life is a game, I don't <laughs> metaphor. Life is a game. And once we understand the rules, man, we're, you know, we're up to bat. And the rules are that we're spirit, having this yes. human experience. And we're creating our reality and that everything is energy vibrating at a frequency that gives it density. Exactly. You know, and, you know, and you tell people this and they you tell people that, well, everything you see in the material world is an illusion. Because if you looked at it under the proper magnification, it's empty space. What? You know, I mean, <laughs> people don't get it. But I think that each of us in our own commitment to expanding, my kitty's saying hello here, in their commitment to expanding this information uh, are the way showers today. We are, we are really going through the forest, as I like to say, we're going through the forest first with the machetes. Hacking you know? down all the, yeah. <laughs> all the stuff in the past so that we, so that those that come behind us will have an easier way, you know? Yes. So with all this education you've been doing, um, how are you actually seeing clients? Tell me about this clinic that you're working in. Uh, okay, so um, prior to working with this clinic, um, a couple of months ago, I started working with them. I was doing online um, work and energy healing and energetic profiles and things like that online. Um, also considered under another name, because I title it under another name, depending on the audience. The audience that you're speaking to. So um, it's called Soul Contracts um, under another name, and you can find it um, a general almost an hour presentation. It might be a little um, longer. I did it with Danielle DeFore. She's one of the other authors. Yes, I'll be interviewing Danielle. In yeah. In for, oh, good, good. Her, her yeah. uh, audience, Prepare for Change, asked me to do a presentation for, um, for Soul Contracts. And I got that video on my YouTube channel. You can find it there. Um, I plan to add some of that into the clinic that I'm working with. It's a stem cell clinic here in Lake Chapala. But I met the owners out, we were just hanging out at one of the local places and the, uh, the husband, it's a husband and wife team. The husband was playing pool with my husband and they started talking stem cells because he had, uh, my husband had knee stem cells done. And uh, he's like, oh, we have a stem cell clinic here. And then he found, I found out a little more. He was saying, oh, we do stem cell facials. We did it. And, and basically, him and his wife started this business from the wife was about to pass away she came down to uh, Mexico as kind of like a last hope and they had already planned the vacation for a while so she said let's just do it anyway even if you know if I happen to pass down there I'm okay with that so they came to Mexico she was literally about she was like days from death and she got just 10 million stem cells um, and, and within a day or two, she started feeling better. She started eating more because she had already lost like 40 pounds. Um, Did she have cancer? No, no. She just had a lot of auto. She's always been sick. Um, she was a nurse for 30 something years, but not a hospital nurse, um, a nurse that in home, in home care. And um, she's always been sick. So she's always had a lot um, of autoimmune issues, compromised immune system stuff. Um, everything from, um, she might even have some Epstein in there and some Lyme and so a little blend. And that's what we found at the center. So, so basically these guys had a Facebook page. The husband was always about to lose his leg because he got a uh, leg lost um, and the motorcycle accident. The leg got bruised, the blood got yeah infected, that kind of thing. And they were talking about taking the leg. Well, he did stem cells as well. So the, when they told their story on Facebook, on their Facebook page, that's when their, everything blew up for them down here. People wanted to know what they did and how they could get down here. So their um, clinic is called Ophelia Rises. 
and it started a little over a year ago. Now they're about to open up a new one in Puerto Vallada as well. So, um, well, you know, given their given their health conditions, how did they were they involved in the research around stem cells, or how do they actually have enough behind them to open up a clinic? Well, the stem cell research is here. Fortunately, Guadalajara is one of the best places to get stem cells. So they already had the lab, one of the best labs that you could find here already doing it. And for a lot of people might not know this about um, for Mexico, because stem cells, of course, they try to keep it limited in the States, you know, so access to it or, or even where it comes from. They're very it's big. It's prohibitive financially. And they're very, how medical system in the States is prohibited very financially <laughs> overall, you know. It's, Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, it's a money racket, you know. So, um, yeah, so one of those things is they've been doing stem cell research down in Mexico for easily anywhere between 15 to 20 years. And most doctors here have have no and have access to this to couple. Stem cells. Had, this couple had. Yeah. And, yeah. So yeah. so it's not a big deal for down here. They already have the access to the clinic. They got the scientists there. They've got the doctors there. So basically, they just formed a LLC. That's an American company that kind of um, they introduced the client to the doctors or introduced the client to the nurses who are going to give them the treatments. And and Ophelia rises started and and now it's been a nonstop. Even bringing me in because the wife and the husband could only you know they could only do but so much by themselves. As you know, you know you can't you can have a business, but it's only two people. So you have to eventually grow it. So in the last few months, along with me and a few of their daughters, they have created enough of a foundation where they feel is comfortable enough to open a second one. And most of the people that come through are um, autoimmune. Um, issues along with now they're bringing in they're thinking about benzo clients and a lot of people this was the first time I heard of this a couple of months ago too Those what kind of clients what Benz, they call them like the benzo community on Facebook so they got somehow when uh, Elizabeth and Jeff wind up doing their Facebook and talking about all these stem cells and what it's been doing for people when people doing their testimonials one of the clients somehow linked them into a benzo community group. And these are, the people, yeah, is, these are the people that have been on medication, prescription drugs, whether it's antidepressants, whether it's all the stuff that the doctors prescribe. And then these people get hooked and addicted to these things. And then they have um, mental brain issue changes and, and things like that and personality changes because of them. And it's hard for them to get off of these meds. So wow. now, yeah, so big community, huge community, want, a lot of people want to get off the stuff, but don't know how or, or find it hard to. And so that's what we're having because we found even before they got into that community, um, a lot of the people that come for us for autoimmune stuff is also already on a lot of medications and prescription drugs. Well, a lot of these people are going back home and don't need all of them or don't need to take any of them. Yeah, so we've wow. had people in our Q&A group that said, oh, yeah, I'm off everything now because of the stem cells. Isn't so, that? Yes, it's, it's the crossover now. So now they're getting busy with those type of people as well. We're going to have to manage a little differently um, with the psychotherapist. What, what did you call it? Benzo? B-E-N-Z? <laughs> Yep, that's what they call it. The the benzo community, I guess these they fall under a certain type of prescription drugs. And these drugs are very hard on the body and they're very addictive. Wow. And yeah. And that's what a lot of them are trying to, to find some kind of hope besides, yeah, I feel like they're not losing their minds or, yeah. And so they're, they're looking for other alternatives and that's how they got into this community because some of the people who were already coming in there were, were on some of these drugs. Through Facebook. That's amazing. So mm -hmm. I'm interested, what is, if you know this, what is the illusion um, using the title Ophelia Rising? Who was Ophelia? Was she a, um, uh, a goddess? It, well, she took it from Hamlet, the, the story in Hamlet. Yeah, with Hamlet and Ophelia and how um, she was kind of, I guess you would say, um, oppressed. And yeah, and then now she rises back from the waters. And I guess that's how Elizabeth feels. It's, it's basically, she named the company, um, probably because like I said, she was on a deathbed when she started it. 
Wow, that's mm-hmm. an amazing. So Ophelia is from Hamlet. I, mm-hmm. I was remember yeah. that Ophelia rising. I th- I assumed it was something like rising from a yeah. situation that's you know, uh, literally from almost death. Like I said, I mean, yeah, she believes that they they were her and her husband days. She was days away from possibly dying. Wow. That's amazing. It's an amazing story. So I'm curious, obviously, about the stem cell facials. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah, they work like they work just like the like the stem cells right now. And they're actually we've been working on possibly changing that system as well. And I'll tell you more about that later as we go along because we just had a meeting this morning. And so I don't want to give out some of the good news before beforehand, but maybe a more effective way of doing it than how we're doing with it with the IVs right now. The stem cell facials are done with a derma needle. So they have these little micro needles on a derma pad. And um, it's a solution that doesn't get mixed until you're actually going to put it on. But these stem cells still work just like the regular stem cells you would get injected into your body for months after the treatment's done. So you make sure you've got these little derma pens, put these little fine micro little pockets in there and you get the facial like a regular facial, but that's added into it. Um, and it's, you know, a little, it's a little tingly um, for some people, a little more prickly. It depends on the skin type or um, who it is, how deep the little micro needles are gonna go. Depends on what you're doing with that person's skin, that kind of thing. And then over time, yeah, and some of them, you can even have a no downtime where you can just walk out and your your makeup on or whatever, just like normal. And then if this goes deeper, of course, you may have a little bit of redness for a few days and then it goes away and then it's just- So these itself. German needles go right into the- into The, the epidermis, wrinkles, yes. Mm-hmm. Right into the wrinkles and they fill out the skin? And you're going to do the entire face with, uh, with the epidermal pen. But they also have these things called- fibroblasts that you blast, you put into the actual lines. If they have like more embedded lines, then you put that fibroblast actually into, you eject it into those lines. Wow. Yeah. So actually so, they work with the neck too? Yes. Yes. Decollete up. All the, yeah. Decollete up. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that that's a, a PS in the back of my mind here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you told me that when we had lunch I thought well there's a thought I love I love facials too they're fun and uh one of the clients were like I want this every time I come down so as part of her regimen I think they're going her and her husband come down like twice a year for stem cell how, treatment so how many times do you need to get it there's no maximum on how much times you need and to it get makes it. A difference. it makes a difference right away? Or yeah, you- it makes a difference in one treatment. It's not like you have to say, oh, I'm, you know, I got to come back in three months or six months or like a regular facial regimen when you're like, okay, how often do you think I should get my extractions or my, you know, my hydrating mask or whatever? Um, and then your esthetician tells you like, you know, probably every eight weeks to, you know, 12 weeks or whatever. No, the, with the stem cells, regardless of whether it's your facial or if you're doing a body one, it's all about feeling out how your how it works for you and and what you feel and if you think you need more or we don't think you don't need any more. So both it works the same way. We we kind of let people decide on their own if they think they need to come back for more. Okay, so this it so it kind of in a way seems like a bit of a detour that you're taking right now working at, at, at the clinic, you know, I mean, how, how do you see that incorporating in your healing work? Well, all of these people, that's a good, that's a good question. All these people have underlying energetic issues. So regardless of whether they're coming in for autoimmune, whether they're coming in for facial, like you said, nobody is kind of like in the book, the cosmic ocean, we're all in that energetic cosmic ocean. And so we get to add on, I'm not talking about it because this, the clinic is actually more concerned about the stem cell aspect, but we actually have alternative healing methods there from all kinds of different things, whether it's a um, acupuncturist, someone who helps with detoxing protocols. Um, yeah, so, so that's all in the background too, um, as far as alternative services go. So, we still get to use that along with whatever they're coming in for, rather that, like a lot of the people that come in, they're pretty sick. 
And like I said, as you know, that didn't just happen one day physically. This stuff has been accumulation of, of under under balances. So all the work even with the energetic profiles and stuff like that, all this stuff can be used at the clinic. And now I just have a, a, a ongoing <laughs> amount of clients coming through with stuff that they're still trying to heal. So we get people that come in and say, like, yeah, I'm coming in for the stem cell treatments, but well, I really think I can use a detox because my, um, my digestive tract is not working. It's not moving. It's not doing anything. Yeah. So you're still getting all of that along with that. With, so do you with have that. an opportunity to then also um, do your healing work? Do you yes. work? You work with the tuning forks and all there? Do you yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I get to do the energetic stuff there. I get, and I'm an esthetician as well as my background. So I love to do the facials. I, get oh, to have, the facials. I didn't know that was in your background. Yeah, that's my, um, I, I've been an esthetician since uh, 1999. What? 1989? 99. 99. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so that I'll be the one that's doing uh, the facials, at least at the Chapala. Um, area because they're going to open up the Puerto Vallarta one as well. Wow, Puerto Vallarta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and actually in the the area, if anybody knows Puerto Vallarta, a lot of people have been there before. Um, it's called um, Conscious China. It's spelled like China, but that's the area. Um, it's past the Romantic Zone, and actually, they, some people call it like the Beverly Hills of uh, Puerto Vallarta, and that's where they're going to be on the next clinic, close to a spa close to a, a nice um, hotel and everything where people can get set up and stuff and to have treatments and stuff. So your clientele are pretty well healed people, I would assume. The, and, they, and they actually, you know what, we've got a lot of people that come back. Um, people split up their treatments because they feel, oh, I, I can go, or go to Puerto Vallarta or go to Mexico every year or a couple times a year. And then we have the people that go back home. We have to watch that. Just like with any other healing, what environment are you going back into when you leave? So protocols for at home, things like that. And we've had a couple of people came back that came back feeling like they were worse because they went back home to a situation that wasn't How ideal. How long has the clinic been in operation where you are? Uh, about a year and three or four months. Wow. And it's rocking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because I think people are, in people from all countries um, are excited about this new new direction you know bruce lipton would say stem cells my god why are we doing stem cells way back when they're nothing new but for mm -hmm, a lot right. of people, stem cell therapy is new and the fact that you can actually do a natural therapy like this that's going to heal the body is very exciting so i imagine that you know um if money is an issue they make it not an issue Yes. And, and they're pretty good about working with people. It doesn't, they don't have set protocols on, oh, if you come in and, and you may find this and as people research themselves treatments, that's what they'll find a lot of times. Um, they'll find that people, they'll say, well, you need this amount. And the person just like, okay, well, I guess I need this amount and this is how much it's going to be. No, we adjust to the person. We've got local people that this guy had lung issues and had trouble breathing and uh, walking without either oxygen or something. He couldn't even walk his dog. And he came in and got just 10 million. And that's like, that's like the low. And within a couple of days, he's already on Facebook. Yeah, I'm walking around with my, with my oxygen machine. I saw him going into the clinic and he's walking his dog. And, and I'm like, Daniel's, you know, he's doing great, you know. And so just with 10. So we don't, we don't make up set protocols for people. We let them see what they're, where they're at, what they can afford, that kind of thing. And then we move from there. But we always work with people. Um, these guys, uh, I found that they've been very helpful with that. And they've even um, helped some local who couldn't afford this themselves um, to get it. Um, one kid I can think of right off the top of my head, his, um, he's a local owner of a restaurant. His son um, has some autistic issues and he needed some stem cells. They wanted to inject it in the eye. The droppers do stem cells in the eyes, which I'm looking to get done myself. I don't have, um, I don't wear glasses or have eye issues yet, but I, I do feel like I get a little bit of eye pain or they get blurry every now and then. So I figure I'm gonna probably get some of that as well. So Where they, do these stem cells come from? Where do they come from? So they take the stem cells from the um, umbilical cord of mothers that have already had babies. So there's no embryonic stem cells where they're taking it from fetuses or anything like that. And, and then worrying about it because for one, 
you don't want those cells to be using anyway because they don't stop multiplying. They're making a body. They're making a human. So they, the embryonic cells want to grow. They're just going to grow and grow, 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 grow. So they get, they get in a, in a um, what do you call it, Petri, those little dishes, and they use from the, um, the umbilical cord, and then they multiply and they grow those cells out. Um, they get out of those cells also too. They get exosomes. So um, where do they get the umbilical cords? From hospitals? Yeah, from the, mm-hmm, from the mothers and stuff. So the lab gets it. Oh, so the mothers sell the umbilical cords. I don't know if they sell them, but I, you know what? And, and I don't know all the specifics that at a hospital, like does, you know, if you're, if you had a baby and your umbilical cord, are they going to tell you that, you know what I mean? So I don't know if they're selling it to them. I think that this is just actually coming from the hospital without anybody, without the mother getting any, yeah, <laughs> getting anything from it being so, you know, I think they just use it like another part of, um, well, just as we have people have babies here and we take whatever fluid or whatever is from this person having the baby here. And then we do what we're going to do with that, that, that fluid. I don't think the mothers are getting anything for, for this. No, I, that's yeah. interesting. You know, this is so interesting. You know, I ne- I didn't think our conversation would definitely go in this direction, but it's very <laughs> fascinating. And it's really an opportunity for you to bring everything in all of the work that you do. Plus the, you know, the, the possibility of beyond the known for us and our human experience. You know, I do believe, even at my ripe old age here, uh, that we can heal the body beyond anything that we've ever thought of. I think we have the power to heal our bodies. And I think that's these medical anomalies that happen where people are told they've got six months to live or three months to live or whatever. And they go, yeah, well, watch this. I'm not going anywhere. Exactly, right? They reinform their cells. They reinform their cells. They're, no, we're not, you know, I've got too much life to live. And they and they go up against uh, the prognosis and they live for many, many years after that. I mean, I've, I've seen that in my own family, actually, um, uh, with my brother who had lung cancer and uh, stage four lung cancer when it was first diagnosed. I mean, we were all like, I could not believe it. Right. But, I don't mean to, to take an aside here, but I will, because I think it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. My brother had stage four lung cancer and he never smoked anything. He never had emphysema. He never had allergies and never had anything. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what he, he did have. He never cried. Oh, he, wow. he never allowed himself to express his sorrow. And I can remember as a little girl watching my father punish my brothers give them beatings in the garage my house my room was right and I would watch my and my father was a hairstylist and he had these leather straps that he would sharpen his stuff on you know he would actually use these leather straps on their bare behinds and you know my older brother the one with the lung cancer never cried. He would never give my father the satisfaction. He just held everything in and then ate him from the inside. And he never cried for, and I didn't see him cry through mm-hmm. his traumas in life, through my mom's death, through my, I never saw my brother cry ever, ever, ever. Mm-hmm. And when that happened to him, I went, I bet you it's all that blocked sorrow in his lungs that finally expressed in the cancer. Exactly. Isn't that grief, grief, sorrow? That's where they, where it's held, right? Correct. Grief is held yeah. in the Mm-hmm. Grief held in the lungs. And I think that cancers and diseases in general, I think, come from blocked emotions that are not expressed in a healthy way, particularly when we're growing up. Exactly. And uh, and then they show up later on in life. That's why it's so important to heal those childhood traumas, you know, and and uh, exactly anyway, he 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 was uh, he they put him on an experimental chemotherapy and uh, he, she agreed to. And the family just rallied around, you know, my, myself and, and my hip nieces and my son, you know, we were all about alternative healing. So he was doing two things. He was doing convention and he was doing everything complimentary. He was doing green tea extracts and curcumin. He was doing, um, uh, uh, what is it? Infrared and mm-hmm. oxygen therapy. And yes, told his doctor he was doing this, but he was doing it tandem with the chemotherapy. 
anyway, um, he said when he started with her, he said, so what's the prognosis on this after the first year? She said, well, so far, 50% of the people make it the first year. And he said, what about year two? And she said, 10%. Mm -hmm. She said, year three. And she said, you're the only one. And he was in year three and the cancer, the cancer subsided. Wow. And he's now cancer free. Amazing. You know, but I, I think it was also his mindset and his attitude. Mindset has so much to do with everything. Right. right. It really does. Our belief system is so powerful. And the thing about our belief system is we can believe something that's not true. And exactly. they, right. But we can't know something that's not true. Mm -hmm. We can't know something that's not true. So I think that our work as healers and spiritual guides at least I see my work as really helping people come into alignment with their true self, with their Christ itself, with their true self, with their higher self, with their force source, you know, doesn't really make any difference what we call that. Right. It's, you know, I call it God, mm -hmm. you know, we're all like cells in the body of God sparks in the flame, the sparks of the, you know, and, and, or even looking at metaphorically as the sun as God and the sun beams as us made of the mm. same you can't separate the beam from the sun, right? Yes. Well, the same stuff. And we're creating our reality all the time. So um, fascinating, really fascinating. So what, what is your, what is your, we're, we're going to be wrapping up here in a few minutes, but I, I wanted to ask, what is your favorite healing modality for your clients? Do you have a favorite one or do you really assess the client as to what your skills would give them. And also the skills of the other practitioners I work with as well. Um, like you were saying before, we have oxygen therapy there as well. Um, but we also have access to infrared sauna. So, so yeah, we kind of- hyperbaric chambers there too? No, they thought about bringing one in yet and that might still be on the table, but, but they talked about it a couple of months ago and with all the changes, we haven't brought it back up again, but that has been talked about the hyperbaric chamber as well. Um, and so, yeah, I just work with, I, I kind of, we get a profile of the person. Um, and I, I think this helps me to round up my research and stuff like that as well. Now that I get to work with so many different types of clients and, um, we do the profile and then we get to see what methods are going to be the best ones to utilize with this particular person. Where's the best place for them to start. Um, and we, we check in with them too and see how they feel about those. Cause we, we want people to, to feel comfortable whatever decision they make along with the, the stem cells or any alternative treatments. We don't want them to have, you know, they call it like buyer's remorse or whatever. <laughs> buyer's remorse is no bueno. We don't want that. So, so yeah, we want to make sure that the person is feeling like, yeah, this feels like the right time for me to do this or, or yeah, my digestive tract isn't moving. Maybe I do need some more herbs or, or I need to detox more circulation. We find that that's a major issue as well. Um, but like you said, with the blocked energy, um, a lot of people are coming in, uh, either had COVID, um, just got it and, um, had multiple, um, bits of it, or either they've gotten, um, vaccine and the vaccine didn't work well for them and stuff just stops working there. It just, their body just isn't responding or using being the way that it would normally act. And so they, they have to get back into finding out too on their own okay, how do I get back to something normal or feel like, like I'm, I'm me again? Do you think, um, and here's a conversation we could probably go on with a while to talking about COVID. Um, you know, I, I went ahead and got vaccinated against my better judgment, but I really, I, I, it's, I, I, without having to go into the circumstances, I made the decision to do that. And I let my inner guidance guide me. So for some reason, I was guided to, to have the vaccinations. But now, you know, there's so much research out there as to what's been behind all of this that, you know, I have, I have my doubts on its credibility and its authenticity. When, uh, in, oh gosh, hypothetically speaking, if the vaccine was is bad for us in our human experience, um, 
Do you believe that's true that that people that, and of course, you look at the masses of people that have gotten vaccinated. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, are you vaccinated, may I ask? No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the reasons, yeah, I had no interest in it um, uh, whatsoever. Um, I didn't, I, I think it, the, it was coming too fast. They were pushing it too hard. And for, you know, like, why, what does it matter if, if it's not proving that it's helping anybody else if you get it, you know, what, what is the, why are they pushing it so hard? So no, I didn't. And I found that um, the people who have had, and a lot of the people who've come in, they're still not even correlating um, that possibly everything, like we'd see that their symptoms have changed since they either had COVID or they got vaxxed. And they, did, they didn't correlate the two. That you notice that all this stuff started amping up or returned or you couldn't keep it under control after this time. And that's what we're pulling together. A lot of this stuff is research because nobody's ever really done the research with the stem cells and, and these symptoms and what's going on with people's immune system before. So a lot of this is just new research that we're founding because we're every, as people come through, we're finding out what, what they're doing before and we get a really in-depth on, on how, how things are correlated. And now we're also following up to see what happens after. So yeah, we, we're finding that um, a lot of it is um, not necessarily beneficial. Um, so no, I didn't get it and I have no plans on getting it. No, I know that. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you feel that should there be anything long term, pejoratively, for people that have been vaccinated, that uh, stem cells could mitigate that? We're, that's what we're, we're believing. Is that's true. what you're doing the research on now? Yeah. And we've had people in the group to so the QA that happens every Wednesday. Um, if anybody wants to join, they can just go on to the Facebook um, of Ophelia Rises and they have, and they can also contact you or, or you through you or me and just ask, okay, what's the link or whatever, but it's on their Facebook page and they have a and a every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And it talks about, and some of these people in the group, they talk about this kind of thing of if they've already been, and one's like, yes, I got the vax. I feel like it didn't help me. And um, so now this protocol, I think, you know, the stem cells will help. We definitely believe it can help um, people who have already gotten it and um, had issues with the shots. Yes, we do. And we're getting more information day by day on it um, as we get more people that have come in and said, yeah, um, I did it. And, and we're paying attention to what's going on with their bodies and if they're improving. And most of the times we really do see people improve in days while they're here. Like a lot of people come in and they can only eat three or four things as a perfect example, um, because that's just how wired, you know, their body is now. And they're like, oh, everything sets me off. And then within days of being here, they're like, oh, yeah, I can eat this now or I, I my digestive tract is moving. So all these things are happening for people, whether um, they've been back um, and they feel like it didn't help or rather they had COVID. Uh, and there's very few that, I, that I've seen in the time that I've been working with the clinic that came through and didn't at least get COVID. So they've all had COVID? A lot of them have, yes. And they were all vaccinated or not vaccinated? It's a kind of like a half and half thing with the vax thing. Some of them been vax, some of them, yeah. Well, when they say, you know, this is a new strain, because I had my vaccine, I had two vaccines and the booster and... Uh, I was stunned that I, and I never really worried about it. I was never fearful about it. You know, I always follow the rules, you know, cause I'm here in society. I want to follow the rules and not, and not um, get into that whole uh, negative mindset about fighting it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I was stunned that I got it. In fact, I, when I got something, I didn't even know I'm never sick. I, didn't, I thought it was altitude sickness because I got it in Sedona and this was just a couple of weeks ago. And, and I'm sure that was it because I had never had any experience like it before. Right. It was an unusual type of a, and it, it didn't last long. It didn't last long, but it mm -hmm. took several days before I proved I tested uh, negative. So anyway, that's uh, a rather of an anomaly right now. And I think there's a lot of research that's going to be done in that area. And it's exciting to see that your clinic is doing it. Oh, so speaking of that too, real quick, um, Patricia, the sound health 
um, with uh, Sherry Edwards that I'm talking about with the vocal pr profile, they also have a coronavirus uh, frequency thing there. And I think it's I think it's free. If you go to the soundhealthportal.com, I believe they have a coronavirus free frequency there to help people. Um, they've got they've got listed under their things for cellular um, inflammation, which we found a lot in the clinic as well. A lot of people's um, having trouble with inflammation in the body, and that's not surprising either because if you don't have the best of diets, I mean, you're, that will cause inflammation in itself. So the sickness is also definitely going to amp up your inflammation. So there's places there that people can um, get. I think I'm pretty sure I believe those are still free um, frequencies that if they're sick, they're feeling a little down, like even you may want to check it out and say, hey, I just had um, COVID. So maybe, maybe I'm not this feeling. Week. Yeah. And I'm not feeling hundred percent. I'm feeling mm -hmm. a little bit off. I was thinking this morning, gosh, you know, what, is this brain fog? What's going on with me? I just felt, I just, I don't feel like myself. And that's another thing. Brain fog is another major thing that we get there. So glutathione is one of the things that we use there at the clinic a lot because, um, and they're starting to get into a little more herbal stuff as well here and the plant, more plant medicine stuff for the brain fog. Cause we get many people who come in and that's one of their major, major um, things on the list that they need to check off is getting rid of the brain fog. And that's one of the things that the stem cells help with best as well, besides the digestion, brain fog, um, energy, depending on the person, can go up and down. But those two major things, I remember um, right off the top that a lot of people say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, right away I noticed something either with my digestion, I've noticed something right away with the brain fog. Is this Sherry Edwards' place? Uh, um, Sherry Edwards is the one that has the Sound Heal Healing Portal. Yeah. Sound Healing Portal. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that's it. And if you, let me, I can check real quick. Yeah, I would, be, sure. I would be interested in, in having that experience. I think it, it would be good. You okay, know, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry here, Patricia. It's soundhealthportal.com. Soundhealthportal.com. Yeah. Okay. I'll check it out. Yeah. Gosh. Um, so, you know, you, you, you're kind of like a Renaissance woman. <laughs> you know, you have a very diverse background and you bring a lot to the table. And now you're going to have a PhD to add to your accolades, which is going to be, you know, I think going to serve you well in the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I think I would be remiss if I didn't talk about your... Um, that you have excerpts that you sent me from the book. By the way, the name of your book, Quieting the Mind in a Chaotic World. I wrote a little book. It's 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 a, it's more like a glorified brochure. It was an ebook, and I called it Finding Balance Between Our Humanity and Divinity in a Chaotic World. Really? Quarians, Quarians wavelength. <laughs> wavelength. Exactly. Um, and I really love this, Swimming the Cosmic Ocean. May I read this? Yes, please, yeah, thank you. It. This is a wonderful, wonderful poem. Treacherous tides of chaos cannot contain my truth, for I am everywhere and beyond. I weave my knowledge into the fabric of all being with glorious purpose and relentless resolve, for I am spirit here to evolve. That's really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that, you. That, yeah you, you know how that is too. When you just channel through what 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 you hear, and like you said, you're a writer too. You you write things down all the time, and yes. it just flows through you. Yeah. Yes, that was very beautiful. Well, you know, how can people find you, darling? Oh, we didn't even talk about your podcast. Oh, no, yeah, that's one of the reasons where they can find me. I was going to say I can tell you a few ways. They can either go straight to my site, Mika Leon. Dot com. Um, they can go to the podcast site. I got. I have a, a How to Heal is the name of the podcast, and you can find it on uh, Spotify. You can find it in a few places, um, and you can also do YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called How to Heal, and I put the podcast there. Um, I put the uh, presentations for the soul contracts or the um, divine healing, the energetic stuff. And I'll probably be putting uh, this interview there as well. 
And anything that I think is, uh, oh, and I also have something new on am amber, the benefits of healing with um, Baltic amber, the amber that you wear. Oh, yeah, I have it. Yeah. Okay, so that, that video is on there as well. I did that um, class for, um, it's called the Herbal uh, Confluence for um, Herbaria and Plant Healers Magazine. They have a yearly conference. I did that one last year for them and I put it on the YouTube as well. So anything that I, I do um, and I feel that it can help anybody, I'll stick it on the YouTube channel as well. But you can find me either at either site, um, How to Heal, um, dot com or you can find me at mikaleon.com or you can go to the youtubes mikaleon.com so mm -hmm. you, don't use, you don't use pettit no that that site was built before i got married okay so it's mikaleon.com mm -hmm. yes m-i-k-a-l-e-o-n-e -E. yeah .com. yeah great great do you have a uh the book there so we can show our yeah i do viewers and our listeners what what the book looks like and lift it up a little bit yeah great women of spirit transforming lives and mika has made a wonderful contribution to the book and her chapter and uh i encourage you do you have the ability for people to get the book on your site as well uh, i don't but i could try to figure that out i had to figure out how to get it to mexico i had to go and get my books <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, but maybe uh, Twinkle does. Twinkle probably does on uh, Matrika's uh, press website. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her about that. I'll talk yes. to her. Well, this has been fun. I've really enjoyed it. You are this has been fun. multifaceted. I appreciate your, uh, I appreciate your intelligence. You're very smart and you're very conscious and you're a visionary and you're on the cutting edge here. You know, so all of the work that you've done in your life has really prepared you for, you know, moving forward now. And you are so young that you have all of that ahead of you. Uh, I want to encourage you again to look at the word work. I, I've been yes. telling Mika about this wonderful body of work that I'm involved in called I Am the Word. Uh, and if you could really move from believing to knowing that you are divine, that's going to give you the edge on every bit of your work because you'll always be coming from vibrating at the highest frequency you can vibrate at. So you'll always be making the decisions that are going to move you forward. So I, I just want to encourage you, you know, to do that again. Or if there's anything I can do to help you be a cheerleader around that. I'm happy to do that. I know. I thank you, Patricia. I'm so happy we got to connect. Yes, me too. Me too. And I have a feeling we're going to be connected. We're going to yes. be, stay connected as friends for, for a while, yeah. uh, for a long time. So thank you very much for being on my podcast today. Thank and you, everyone. Very nice to be here. Thank you, everyone, for watching, uh, listening, and uh, uh I'll be doing another one pretty soon with one of the other women from the group. Again, the book is called uh, Women, Women of Spirit, Spirit, Transforming Lives. Women of Spirit, Transforming Lives. Okay, so thank you, Mika. And good luck with everything that you're doing, darling. And we'll thank stay you. in touch. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye, Bye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Well, we can talk. Yay. <laughs> we did it. We did it. It was good. It was good. I hope that's helpful for you. Yes, yes. We were and you all... never know where it's going to go. What did you say? I said you never know where it's going to go. No, you never know who's going to watch it. Right. Oh, I, oh, oh, I, I mean, I, even, I even with us talking. Even with us I talking. Have, I don't have. I'm going to be doing my own podcast called Align with the Divine. Ooh. which is why I went to Sedona to meet with the guys because I want them to be on and they're going to be on my podcast. And uh, I'm really interested in, and I will have you, of course, on my podcast when I get going because you're really right in the heart of, you know, everything. Thank you. Aligning with who you are as spirit and knowing that beyond, like, you know, your name and like, you know, you're a woman, just knowing that you're God in form. When you can really be totally solid with that. It's going to make a huge difference in everything that you do.
yeah, it, it's, it's done that for me and it continues to do it for me. Right. Yeah. I could tell, I could tell, yes, check out that site. Cause I think that might be able to help you with the frequencies for sound, um, soundhealingportal.com sound, sound health portal the sound health portal yeah i wrote mm -hmm. it correctly sound health portal.com and uh at some point in time as spirit would have it i would really love to come and visit the clinic and now if i went to the clinic and i had a, a couple of these stem cell facials what is i would just have like a couple of facials and then go home and it would last mm -hmm. or, no it yeah. does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, people are coming here and usually because they don't have it on the menu. So people are coming here and getting it done along with their stem cell treatments. It's not like they were advertising the facial parts, but they knew they had access to the products. So, so yeah, it's, it's basically, yeah, you can come in and you can get this because uh, I know you have a son in Nuevo, Nuevo Vallarta. Is that my, what your son is? Uh, my son has a uh a timeshare in Puerto right. Vallarta and Nueva Vallarta. Yeah, yeah, because I know you talked about it possibly coming back to Mexico or something like that. So well, you he struggles, you know, he struggles with asthma. Oh. He struggles oh. with asthma. Is there is it stem cell treatment for asthma? Well, let me, when I go in today, I'll get specifics on that. I'll write it down and I'll ask them about, um, is anybody coming in or they know of any, any testimonials or anybody has said anything about it helping them with asthma and I'll see what they say. Yeah, he had a slew of allergies uh, growing up, but primarily cats. And uh, oh, yeah. so um, I'd, I'd love to know that. And can you just tell me too, what the cost of the facials are? The facials are four, 400. $400, mm -hmm. so one facial and then is one facial sufficient or do you, I mean, I'll tell you what I would love to do is I'd love to get some help with my neck. What, why don't you let me do this? Let me put down, okay, so uh, Patricia's son. You know, look, I mean, the difference between my neck, you know, it's like, it, it's a huge difference. Patricia's son of allergies um, and you said um, he has, uh, what his is with his lungs. What was you asking me to, Check asthma. Yeah, asthma. asthma. Mm -hmm. trouble, yeah, he has trouble breathing and he has an allergy to cats. And I don't think, I think they're going to tell me, yeah, but just because of the story I told you about Daniel and his lungs, I, I am sure, but I'm going to ask him um, if anybody came in specifically for that purpose. And then for you, for the facials, and you're concerned about the neck area. Okay. Anything specific you want me to ask them about the about the facials for the if you come in and get a couple and and you want to work on your decollete and your neck? Any? Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty good here. You know. Mm -hmm. for, yeah, it looks good. I'm, yeah, I'm, it looks great. Pretty good here, but I use a wonderful skin cream called Neora. Mm -hmm. I use Oh, um, sounds familiar. Yes, it's a direct sales company, right? It's the what? It's a direct sales company, correct? They don't yeah. sell it in the store. I've heard of Nerium. I've been mm -hmm. using it for a long time and I think it's really helped my skin. You know, I think my skin is pretty good for 77. I do and, too. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen but, you in person as well, remember? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's this that I'm wondering about without Are you having... doing any toning exercises like these. Will you tone, will you pull the muscle up through here by stick by using the tongue and sticking it up? Are you doing any of these types? Yep. Any of these? Uh, any of them? Where you stick the tongue out and it makes the muscle from here pull up. Those also too will help you with facial toning. Facial toning, I should really mm -hmm. look at that and really mm -hmm. do it. I think it would probably help me. Yeah. yeah. Cause you can feel when you did that, you could feel that pull, right? When you, uh -huh. And tongue straight up. Yep. Take the tongue and stick it straight up or either take the chin and do like this. Yeah, and you'll feel those muscles through here pulling. So even even a little of that too will help. And I'll ask them. I'll ask them. Um, and I'll get some feedback on the people who've already been through that I know that is yeah, not right. facials. Yeah, and follow up with them and see since they've been to the clinic weeks later, whatever. And um, I think uh, there's one woman I can think of a uh, yeah, Le um, Leanna. She's had it like a couple of months ago. 
So I'll know for sure with her and Vicky, they'll be able to tell me, oh, you know, since I got it done, I've noticed this, 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 this. You mean for her neck and for her neck and mm-hmm. face? Yep. So when they yep. do a facial, it's the face, the dec- it's the whole decollete area. Right? Yep, exactly. From here up. And how long mm-hmm. does it take? About an hour and a half. Yep. And they actually inject the stem cells with micro needles in? Mm-hmm. And I have to mix it right before the, the session. I have to mix it literally right there when I'm working on you and put the powder with the with the liquid part and everything to, to make sure it's its most active when I put it on your face and stuff. Yeah. You actually do that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. Yep. I'm going to do that at some point in time. I'm going to give myself that gift. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm to Mexico, I'm coming to um, Nueva Vallarta. Um, for Thanksgiving. I'm going to be there for Thanksgiving. It's my son's mm-hmm. birthday. Right. So to go down. Yeah. How okay. far away? How far away are you? Well, the Puerto Vallada Clinic will be there. And that'll just be, you know, obviously just up the hill, probably an hour, hour and a half from where your son's at. And then this clinic at Lake Chapala is about a four hour drive. Yeah. About a four hour drive. So it would, it would, I think that if I did that, it would, I would have to come directly. I would have to come to Mexico for that purpose. I don't think I could do it tandem. Mm-hmm. I'm also planning it. I'm planning to go to a yoga retreat in February and that's going to be in Loretto. Oh, we're right at the border. It's, yeah. I know where it is. It's, it's, it's yeah. It's right at the border of um, Texas and Mexico. But that's another from the border because we've done several trips driving back and forth. Loretto, it's not Loretto, it's Loretto. L O. Let me see that. L O R E T O, Loretto. I mean, let me look that up real quick. In its expat community. Um, Let me Google L O R E T O, Loretto. Oh, Loretto. Okay, let me see here. Loretto, town in Mexico. Um, how far is Loretto from? Loretto from Lake Chapala. Yeah, Loretto from Lake Chapala. That's going to be. Uh, what are they telling me here? How far? Maybe I need to actually put in how far, how far. You know, I just looked at my clock and I've got to run. I have an 11 o'clock. So, oh, yeah, um, I'll look it up and I'll get back to you and I'll ask yeah. any questions on the on the stem cells too. Yeah, yeah. it looks like uh, it's it's a ways. It's a ways, yeah. Because I'm it, thinking, it, it, you know, if I do if I do the work with your clinic, it'll have to be a special trip. And I'll just, you know, I'm just going to put that in my out there in the ethers out there in the ethers that i want to do it you know it's on baja correct Loretto. i believe so, yes okay yeah yeah it's on the baja side okay okay mm-hmm. all right darling this was fun i enjoyed I know. it you know, you're wonderful and good luck with everything you're doing and let's stay in touch thank you and i'll look for the um the audio from you know the video from this and then i'll edit yeah, it i'll and... send you the link as soon as i get it okay thank you Send it out. Yeah, great. And okay. you know, if you can focus, do a little bit of the word work. Every day. <laughs> yes. if you do a little bit of it every day. You're gonna get into it. You know, the guys are working with you already. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Talk to you soon. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye.